Hey guys, in this episode, it's going to be a really good one actually. I was interviewed once again by the Smart Property Investment Show and I sit down with Tom Gilmore. We choose select topics that we discuss. We're going to talk about what data you should focus on to find the right property for your portfolio. And number two, we have talk about the importance of making investment decisions based on data, right? So we're going to be talking about this and how to do all of this without needing a buyer's agent processes, the how, the team, the data, everything like that. So for the next 15 or 16 minutes, you know, it's going to be some hopefully <laughs> pretty, pretty new, revolutionary, insightful content. So enjoy, guys. All the best. G'day, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of the Property Showcase. I'm your host, Tom Gilmore, media and marketing strategist here at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Guys, today's topic is all about investing on your own terms and learning to do things your own way. I think there's uh, a lot of investors out there, including myself, who, you know, for whatever the reason your purchase might be, might be PPOR or for an investment decision, you can do this on your own. A gentleman today who is joining me on the program, his name is PK. He's the director of consulting by PK. And PK here is a firm believer in using the correct data, learning what you need to know to invest in the right property. And we're not just talking about properties that are just in your backyard. We're talking about across the nation, how to do it right. And we're going to be jumping through some key points today that will I think fundamentally teach you a little bit about PK. It'll also allow you to understand a little bit about the program that PK actually also runs for people who want to go about their journey, their investing journey on their own terms. PK, how are you going? Doing well, thanks, Tom. How's your day today? Uh, look, summer's here in Brisbane, so yeah, humidity levels are skyrocketing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, mate, even on camera today, it does look like it's a bit hot today. Yeah, yeah. It's all good though. Not complaining. So PK, look, I tend to agree with you in some respects that, look, there's a wealth of information out there, right? I mean, whether we're talking about SPI content that's out there to the Australian newspaper to Sunrise getting on and and prancing about. In sort of, I suppose, a, a short sentence, before we get into some of these key points here, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you thought that designing some, I suppose, an educational program would actually help people and help people understand to invest in property the right way. Yeah, great question, Tom. I, mean, I think a bit like I chatted with Phil the other day as well, you know, I started investing in property and I was just really overwhelmed. This was a little bit over 10 years ago. Back then, there wasn't SPI, <laughs> there wasn't much of YouTube or Facebook forums or anything. There was less information, but it was still confusing. And these days it's just that on steroids, you know, everyone's got a agenda, everyone's an expert, everyone's trying to sell you something. Every single strategy is conflicting, people giving you different pieces of advice. And it just kind of makes people think that, hey, you know, this is all too hard. I just got to outsource this because, you know, let's just leave it to the experts, quote unquote which is fine for some people, which, you know, is completely the best thing to do if you have little interest and no time. But where I really came from in my own journey was building up a portfolio. I was working nine to five or nine to nine, you know, all that kind of thing. But I had a few hours a week spare. I was interested in data. I was interested in property investing. And I just found that actually you can do this yourself. You know, you just need some process and some data, the right team around you. You don't need to outsource, you know, end up paying 50 to $100,000 in whether you call it property investment company fees, BA fees, whatever you like over the course of a portfolio. You don't need to do that. Doesn't mean that's a wrong thing to do, but you don't need to do that. And that's really where this all came from. Yeah, I, I look. I tend to agree with you here. And look, we're going to run through some of these points. Everything from data to you know the actual buying process to hope to give the the listeners a good insight as to how you can operate and what they can actually hope to learn from you. And look, let's just jump straight into the first point: is you know, what should people be doing? And I think this is so important. What should people be doing who are overwhelmed? by all that data and information because you can get caught up in the hype. You can get caught up in 10 different research projects a day, <laughs> an hour. How do you break that down and how do you know what you're looking at is right? Well, I think first of all, there's something to be said about you almost need to be confused a little bit to then appreciate 
taking an alternative route. You know, if someone tries to pitch you a, you know, seven step program, <laughs> you're going to be like, you know, this is, this doesn't sound right. But seven minute abs, mate, seven minute abs, that's <laughs> seven <laughs> yeah. minutes to buy a property. That's it. Right. So you kind of need to do a lot of free education online. You know, there's so many different methods out there, YouTube, podcasts, you know, Facebook, all this kind of thing. And then be able to see the forest from the trees. Then you actually can figure out, is someone just trying to spruik some data point? Because you can take data and make a story from it. Any story you want, you just juggle around the numbers. So you, there's a level of kind of free education that's required. So you can see the forest from the trees. But then ultimately, I mean, my motto or my mantra is don't take anyone's word for it. Not even mine, not even yours, Tom, no disrespect. You know, don't take anyone's word for anything. Rely on the data and let the statistics prove themselves, not just one statistic like vacancy rate or yield or population growth, but a series of statistics that inbuilt checks and balances. And that's really what puts you on the right path to passive income. Let's put that into practice then, because this is, I mean, it comes perfectly into the next point here. But then how would you use data then to find a combination of both or one or the other, a combination of, you know, high growth, high yield, high, you know, how do you use data in that respect then? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And to be honest with you, like it's no secret, like I'm happy to talk about the data points and give them out freely. So we, or when I say we myself and the people I work with at least, we use about 30 or 35 data factors to find growth suburbs that also give net income. We look at things and people might want to make notes. We look at things like stock on market percentages, things like days on market trends. We look at online search interest ratios, building approval percentages, average vendor discounting percentages, developable land supply schemes, job advertisements trends. Et cetera, et cetera. You know, you can all find this stuff in the public domain. It's not on one website, but you can all find it. And then quantitatively, and this is the thing, quantitatively, without my opinion or your opinion, quantitatively, you can define the balance between supply and demand, right? And when you can learn to do that, then it becomes kind of a rinse and repeat process and you can grow your portfolio. Yeah, I suppose... In a time, I feel like we can all feel whether you are, you know, an expert in the industry and an investor yourself or buying for the first time, I think there's no denying that everyone feels the pressure at the minute. And I can certainly attest to the fact that I know a fair few people who are consuming massive amounts of data and trying to compare and compartmentalize some of those things that we've just said now because they know lending's tightening, because they know that there's like this window and they're trying to try and trying to do it mm. and they're trying to get it right. Is there like a, in sort of what you could teach people, not just with these data points and what to be looking for, is there an actual process that people really do need to keep in the back of their mind in terms of how they approach a property purchase or even before they think of that they've found the right property? I think, yeah, maybe from the back of their mind to the front of their mind, because like you said, Tom, you know, we're not in the 90s. We're not in the early 2000s. We can't buy 200 properties in 10 years anymore. <laughs> like the lending <laughs> strategy, the lending policies aren't going to allow that. So you really need every single property to give you growth and to give you positive cash flow. Even if you can afford negatively geared properties, the banks aren't going to like it. So you need that combination. That's that's a high, it's just a reality. I mean, it's an unfortunate reality. And so once again, I kind of just revert back to data you don't need to be a statistician. You don't need to be a mathematician. But if you can lean on, I mean, at least what I've lent on is a statistical technique called multivariate regression analysis, which says, okay, well, PK, you're talking about days on market. Well, this person saying days on market needs to be 90 days. This person says it needs to be 40 days. The other person says it needs to be 60 days, but vacancy rate needs to be less than 2%. Like, let's just strip away the opinion and let the statistical regressions do the talking. And that's really the system that that we've built. I'm not going to say it's it's 100% perfect 100% of the time, but it's the best that I have seen. And if we can rely on those coefficients, the thresholds, the weightings that the modeling itself generates, not that I generate, the modeling itself generates, then that's a, a safe bet or it's a reliable system, reliable process by which you don't need to look at each data point individually one by one you can systemize it and let the the process of interpreting data be done by 
effectively a machine. Yeah. I suppose you're, you're just taking it away from more of the rocket science, which it isn't. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I think people like to understand it. I don't think anyone wants to outsource their property investment decision to a robot. So people want to understand it. And this is what, it's not a black box. It's not like you put in your first and last name, punch in your date of birth. Here's the answer. Here's the suburb. You still need to learn how to drive it. Like you drive a Ferrari, it's different from how you drive a Toyota, <laughs> right? But that doesn't mean you need to know how to you know, work the pistons or what the chassis is made out of. Just enough to be able to drive it, understand it, build your confidence. So it's not rocket science. I know that a lot of these terms that I'm throwing around are, can be seen as a bit nerdy, but it truly isn't rocket science. Anyone can do this. For sure. I think um, this might resonate with our listeners quite a bit here at SPI. Often we talk about buying outside your backyard and buying interstate. I suppose what I would want to learn from you is, is, you know, how can I do that? How can I actually use everything that I learned from you and buy property, you know, interstate, Brisbane, Perth, some remote rural town in South Australia, you know, you know, you know how do you go about that? Is, is there a step process to that as well? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, there's two things everyone wants to know, right? Like, where should I buy? What's the next hotspot? All that kind of thing. But even if I said a hotspot, not that we're investing there, but let's say like Devonport in Tassie, even if you drop suburbs, people don't have the ability to actually execute upon that. Let's say you're living in Sydney or Melbourne. You're like, oh, that's great. That's what I want to know. That's what I'm Googling. But now I have it. I don't know what to do with it. So suburb selection is one thing. But then you need to use a, a list of criterion to figure out within that suburb. Once again, this is all online. How do we find the right streets? How do we find the right dwelling type? For example, you don't want, want to be right next to housing commission. And, and you can avoid that simply by looking at things online. You don't need to fly there, right? And then you can learn how to find properties off market. So it's not that we just jump on real estate or domain, although we don't ignore that. But by establishing relationships with a few good agents in that specific suburb that we've already honed in on, you know, it takes one week, two, three weeks, three weeks to build a relationship with an agent. And then you start getting off market deals flowing your way, just like a really good buyer's agent would, right? It's no different. It doesn't take years of relationships, just takes being a nice human being and being clear about what you like. That's a pretty good, I mean, just touching on the topic of off market interesting one considering nothing feels like it's off market these days because they know they're going to get the, get the money they want how do you go about that? i mean you don't even have to include interstate in that particular margin there you can use it as a whole if you want how do you source off market deals other than just picking up the phone and calling the agent which i'm i'm with that method by the way i want to do that i'm a firm believer in shaking people's hands and i will drive out there and do it but not everyone wants to do that Another way that maybe people don't know about how to find off-market deals is through property managers. So I always say, and I'll say it again, property managers are the most important component of your team. They're not real estate agents. They're just there to manage your properties and they inspect your properties basically free of cost. So you can buy anywhere around Australia without having to catch flights, or even if you want to buy locally, you don't need to spend your weekends at inspections. But to your point, Tom, when you build these relationships with the property managers, they have a whole rent roll. And you know, let's say they have a rent roll of 500 properties. Chances are that in that locality or that local government area that the property manager operates, there's going to be a whole bunch of those properties in their rent roll investors who are selling, right? And when investors sell properties, they like to sell to investors, right? There's just something about it. They know it's going to be clean. It's going to be a professional transaction. There's not going to be emotions involved. And so when you build a relationship with a property manager, not hard, go rate, ratemyagent.com. Not only will they do the inspections for you, so you can buy anywhere in Australia, but they will find these properties or they will let you know which investors, their clients are selling and they'll bring them to you off market. It's kind of a, a thing that not many people know about, but it's incredibly powerful. Yep. I agree. What can people expect to, I suppose, walk away with? If I was to say, put your course in stages, number one, what's the sort of completion time, whether they be a first time investor, perhaps they've already got 10 properties in their portfolio. I think sometimes, including myself, you know, you need a bit of a reality check every now and then just because you do invest in property. Sometimes just remembering the basics is the way forward. But we all want things now. We're all impatient. What could people expect 
to learn from you in your course and what, what would that time frame be? So it's a completely self-paced course. It's not like a TAFE course or university degree, you know, where you go and get some PowerPoint slides and hopefully you get a job at the end. <laughs> this is the real world. So you have lifetime access and lifetime mentorship as well. And I think that's, that's the point. Like a lot of first-time investors, because they consume a lot of good content, you know, including SPI, but a lot of this content is dominated by firms that, you know, are going to do it for you. Right. And so they just kind of fall into this default setting of, oh, it's all too hard. I'm going to outsource it. What they just require is a bit of mentorship. So the course is there, but the mentorship element is there as well for lifetime. So, you know, even when they, let's say, find a property through the processes that we teach, they can send it to us. We can be the sounding board, tell them whether it's the right one or not. But apart from that kind of stuff, we go to the more advanced property investing very quickly, right? So yes, you know, we teach you what is equity, what is rental yield, all the kind of hygiene factors. It's important. It's the kind of foundation, right? But then we go to advanced. So most these days, most of the people that we work with are actually very interesting. I never thought it would be like this, but it's mostly people who already have maybe one or two properties have realized that, hey, the outsourcing didn't work for them or they made a mistake or whatever the case may be. Now they really want to take responsibility and do things properly. They don't want to make mistakes. So I don't think I answered your question about what was in the course, but that's kind of who it caters for as well. Yeah, for sure. No, I, that, it, it almost does though. I mean, look, you got to get in touch obviously to get more. And that brings me on to my next point, PK. How do people get in touch with you? How can we navigate our way to the course? So I'm like a huge believer and people not just jumping and buying a five six thousand dollar course or a fifteen thousand buyers agency or a twenty thousand dollar program. So I think the first thing you should do is go to my website consultingbyapk.com.au. Don't book a call with me. <laughs> first of all, go to the YouTube channel Five Thousand People Community. You know, there's two hundred YouTube videos free educational content, right? That's number one. Number two, go to my Facebook group, links in the website, there's 10,000 person community there. See if what you're learning, what you're experiencing vibes with you. If you think we're on the same frequency, then you can definitely get in touch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Also on top of that, everyone tuning in, if you jump over to smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, you will also find PK on the website there and you can click through to his website there as well if you want to hear more of PK's actual investing journey and how he came to be the man he is today. You can jump on to one of the most recent smart property investment shows hosted by, of course, Phil Tarrant, uh, where PK actually broke down his portfolio uh, and you can tune into, into more of the life story. I feel is the is the best way to pitch that scenario, but um, no, I found it very insightful. I, I've listened to it and I thought it was excellent. So, um, thank hey, Kate, thank you so much for thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Thank you.